In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a basic chatbot using BotPress. If you want to learn more about any of the terms I'll use throughout this video, be sure to check out our dictionary playlist linked below. The first thing I'll do from my BotPress dashboard is click Create Chatbot. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to start from a blank canvas, but if you're new to BotPress, I recommend following along with the guided tutorial that we provide directly in the studio. So, when you first open the studio like this, the first thing you'll see are two nodes, your start and your end node. Everything that happens during your user's conversation happens between these two nodes. The bot we're gonna to build today is super simple. It's going to ask our user how many people are going on a trip and it'll recommend different activities based on what they respond. The first thing we'll have our bot do is greet our user. So we'll right click anywhere in the studio and select a standard node. Then into this standard node, we'll drag and drop a text card from the card tray directly into it. And we'll type out the message we want our user to see the first time they interact with our bot. So in this case, I'll write, hello, welcome to your personalized recommendation service. We'll also make sure to rename our node so that our workflow stays organized. Now, the next thing you'll want to do is transition over to another node. Transitions in BotPress are handled using our flow logic card. You can find them right over here in the card tray. Most of the time, you'll want to transition to the next node in most circumstances. So in this case, we'll use an expression card, drag it over to the card tray, and label it as always. BotPress's AI will take care of the rest, so you don't have to write the logic yourself. Next, we'll add a node that asks our user a question. So like before, we'll create a standard node and we'll rename it to keep our workflow organized. Let's call it Capture Information. Since what we want from our user is the number of people going on this trip, we'll use the correct Capture Information card. In this case, that'll be the number, since the answer we're looking for is a number. We'll drag it over into the node and set up our Capture card over here in the inspector on the right-hand side of the editor. So, what we'll first want to set up is our question to ask the user. In this case, let's ask, how many people will be going on this trip? Now, the next thing we have to set up is how we're gonna save this result. So now we'll store the result in a variable. All this means is that when your bot wants to reference this information again in the later part of the conversation's flow, you won't have to ask your user for it a second time. So now let's create a variable called numPeople, which just means number of people. And there we go. Whenever your user answers this question, their answer will be saved in the variable called numPeople. Now, let's connect these two nodes by dragging and dropping a path between them. And there we have it. The next thing we need to do is divert our user's path based on what they've answered to this previous question. To do this, we'll use the flow logic cards located in the card tray. Because we want to provide three different recommendations, we'll need three different expression cards here. So that's one, two, and three. In the label section for each card, we'll use natural language to segment our user's flow. So for the first option, let's type in user input is a number between one and five. When we hit enter, BotPress's AI will write the conditional logic for us, so you don't need to do that on your own. Natural language is much easier to use here. Now, let's do that again. For user input, which is a number between 6 and 20. And finally, for the last one, let's use user input is a number higher than 21. Now, we have three separate flow cards that will each lead our user to a different activity recommendation. Next, let's create individual nodes for each of our separate recommendations. So for groups between one and five, let's recommend a nice dinner at a restaurant. 
For groups between 6 and 20, let's recommend going on a hike. And for anything higher than 20, let's recommend a simple potluck picnic. Next, we'll send a message in each node telling the user how many people they're going to be and what our recommendation is for that number of people. Ah, so you'll be this many people. Now, take a note here. Using the at num people variable here, we'll reference the variable that we stored earlier based on the user's response. In the chat, the user won't see at num people, but instead, they'll see the number that they selected earlier. Now, let's copy and paste this card into each of our separate nodes below using copy and paste. And there we go. Finally, let's send a separate message in each of these nodes with our individual recommendation. Done. Now, let's wrap up our bot by using transition or flow logic cards to move our user to the end of the conversation represented by this end node. So here, for each of our individual recommendations, we're going to add an always transition to make sure that the user always reaches the end of the conversation. And now, let's connect everything together by drawing paths. So, for groups of between 1 and 5, we'll recommend a restaurant, and make sure that reaches the end of the conversation. For groups between 6 and 20, a hike, reach the end of the conversation. And anything higher than 20 will be a picnic, which reaches the end of the conversation. Now that our nodes are all set up and our paths are all drawn, the very last thing we have to do is manage our conversation end workflow. So over here on the left-hand menu, you'll see conversation end workflow. What this is, is the very last message your user will see regardless of what they were recommended or which conversation path they took. So we'll write a simple message here using a send message card and say, thank you for using your personalized recommendation service. And finally, we'll wrap it up by using an always transition to make sure that this conversation ends properly. The very last thing we'll do before going live with our bot is test it to make sure it works. So on the right hand side of the editor, you'll see the emulator that you can use to test out your bot. So if we say hi, and we say 17 people will be going on this trip, we are correctly recommended a peaceful mountain hike. This guided walkthrough barely scratched the surface of what you can do with BotPress, so stay tuned for additional resources highlighting our built-in AI capabilities, channel integrations, and other options for automation. Happy bot building!